Hello. This video will go over the Thursday midterm. The grades for this midterm have been released as of March 21st, the same day this video has been published. So, if you have any questions about your grade, please email me or any other TA and we'll be happy to help. Question 1a. Take the integral of x times cosine of pi times x. This question is obviously asking us to use integration by parts. But the only thing remotely difficult about integration by parts is to find out which parts we will need to integrate and which parts we will need to derive. So, here's a reminder of integration by parts. In this case, our u is x. And the derivation of that would simply be 1. Next, we take cosine of pi times x and set that as our value for dv. But we only care about v. So we must find the antiderivative of cosine of pi times x. This is quite trivial since all we need to do is just use u substitution. Our u would be pi times x because we want to rewrite the equation in the format of cosine of u. Next, we need to take the derivative of u. So we'll call that du. But we need to solve for dx in terms of du. Here is dx in terms of du. Now since 1 over pi is a constant, it can go through the integral, and now we only need to solve for 1 over pi times the integral of cosine of u du. This is quite easy. The antiderivative of cosine of u is just simply sine of u. And this finally results in 1 over pi times sine pi x. But we're not done yet. We need to plug this into our equation of integration by parts. However, we have a problem. VDU, or as Dr. Bernhard likes to call it, voodoo, certainly does look like voodoo. We're going to need to use u substitution once more in order to integrate voodoo. Notice that the denominator is pi, which can be written as the following. And once more, 1 over pi can move outside the integral. And, hmm, wait a minute. I'm getting a weird sense of deja vu. This truly is voodoo indeed. So, you should know how to do it, so now I'm just going to evaluate for the integral of voodoo. And once you plug everything in, there you go. That is your answer for question 1a. Okay, question 1b. Evaluate for the integral of arctangent 3x. Be warned, this question is a little sneaky. This is a problem that still requires us to use integration by parts. We first start off by asking ourselves, can we find the antiderivative of arctangent? Yes. But will it be easy? No. So then we ask ourselves, can we derive the arctangent of 3x? Yes. And we can actually do so quite easily by using chain rule. By now you might be asking, well, what about dv? Well, dv has to be 1, because we are taking factors of the expression and distributing it amongst u and dv. And 1 is a factor. We can easily find the antiderivative of 1. It's just x. But what about du? Well, recall the derivative of arctangent, which can be more conveniently rewritten as this. Replace the x with 3x, and don't forget to apply chain rule. Anyways, we'll go and plug everything back in for integration by parts. Once again, we have a very scary looking integral, but let's make it slightly easier for us to work with. First, note that the integral can be rewritten as this. The 3 is a constant, so that means that it can move outside the integral. But now what? As it turns out, it is yet again quite trivial since we only need to use u substitution to integrate. Our value of u would be 1 plus 9x squared and du 18x dx. Because we need to cancel out x dx from our integral, we're just going to rewrite du as du over 18, which can simply be rewritten as this. And the 1 over 18 can move outside of the integral since it's a constant. And we integrate u to the power of negative 1, which is going to evaluate out to be the natural log of u. Substitute in u, simplify, and we're done. Question 2 asks if the following summation converges or diverges. So, this is question 2a, and I first start off by plugging in n equals 0. The first term in the summation will be our value of a. The common ratio is negative 2 thirds, and the absolute value of that is less than 1, so we know it converges. I'm simplifying a here, 
because then I would plug it into a over 1 minus r. I simplify the answer that I got from that to get my final answer, the value that the summation converges to for question 2a. 2b is the exact same thing as 2a, so I'm just going to give a few notes. You can use ratio tests, but it's a little bit overkill for this question, and also you don't really need to solve for a in order to solve for r. I just happened to see the absolute value of r is less than 1, so I knew it converges and I continued with the rest of the problem. Anyways, that is how I would solve this problem. Do note that the reason why I'm making the solution is because the answer key for 2b is incorrect. Okay, so question 3a. Find the first three non-zero terms of the Maclaurin series. This problem, you're going to very quickly notice, requires a lot of simplification. It's very, very tedious, but the question isn't inherently hard. It's just very long. You can see here that what I'm doing is just taking derivatives, which is quite simple. And all I'm doing is just plugging in zero into those derivatives and simplifying. In fact, the bulk of the operation here is to simplify to have the easiest answer to work with. And now we plug it into the Taylor series to get our final answer. But of course, not without simplifying once more. And then now we can plug in our answer. And that is our final answer. Question 3b asks us to find the first three non-zero terms of the Maclaurin series. We're first going to start off by dividing the numerator and denominator by 2. Now do you notice something? It should look familiar because it has been rewritten in the format of a over 1 minus r, which we can now convert into a summation. Once we plug in n equals 0, 1, and 2 respectively, we can simplify, and that will give us our final answer. Now this method skipped all the simplification and derivative taking that we did in the previous problem. This is all about efficiency. We could have easily done the derivative stuff, but it would have been much more time consuming, and this is just a shortcut that we can do in order to get our answer much quicker. Alright, finally, the last question of the test asks us to find the antiderivative of the following using a power series. Now firstly, this is the power of e to the x using a summation. And now, we're just going to replace x with x to the sixth. And because of x squared being multiplied at the front, we're going to need to raise that power once more by plus 2. And now we integrate. Integrating is quite simple, just add one more to the power, and then divide the entire thing by the new power. Uh, lastly, don't forget to add plus e. And that's it. That is the entire test.